In Fallout New Vegas, just outside of Novak, we can find Gibson's scrapyard, along with the owner, Old Lady Gibson. Gibson has become a fan favorite over the years, and her services are often used to solve the copious amount of junk found in the Mojave. If the courier was to take Old Lady Gibson out for some reason though, they would find quite the nice reward waiting for them, as we can loot a unique sawed-off shotgun called Big Boomer from her person. This gun has a one-of-a-kind design with the words Big Boomer emblazoned on the grip, and the shotgun has more damage than its standard counterparts. It's actually a pretty decent weapon to use. We can also find some in-game files that show an unused texture for the Big Boomer, making it look more similar to Fallout 3's sawed-off shotguns. Whatever the case, many people don't kill Old Lady Gibson to grab this piece, but this is the wasteland. You will need all the help you're gonna get. Thank you to Isolay and Appius for suggesting this one on the Discord server. In Fallout New Vegas, we can go to Sunny Smiles and Good Springs for a nice rundown of life in the Mojave. During this, a few opportunities for unique dialogue will show up. First, the Good Springs settler being attacked by geckos will raise our rep with the town and gift us water after saving her. This is a nice little boost to have so early in the game, especially if you plan on helping Ringo. Holy moly. If you hadn't come here like you'd done, I'd be a goner for sure. I came up here to draw water, but here, you should have what I got. You look thirsty. As for the topic of the video, if Sunny's dog Cheyenne dies in combat, we will receive some understandable unique dialogue from her. Confound it, Cheyenne. Why'd you have to go running in like that? You were supposed to stay. I'm sorry, you shouldn't have to see me like this. I'm not gonna be very good company right now. I did have another thing to teach, but I'll understand if you'd rather I just pay you so you could be on your way. Okay. Well, good luck to you. I'm heading back to the Prospector. I could use a drink about now. In the Fallout New Vegas DLC, Old World Blues, we find ourselves at the mercy of mad scientists turned post-apocalyptic robots in the Big Mountain facility. Dr. Klein and his group of wayward floating brethren have removed your spine, heart, and most importantly to this video, your brain. Because of this, we actually get some dialogue with what is essentially ourselves during the end game of the DLC. One of the first things people notice about this brain is the voice. Many people relate it to the sound of Stewie Griffin from Family Guy. This is no coincidence, as the voice actor, Sunil Mohathra, confirmed he based the character on the Family Guy star. Well, well, look who finally dragged themselves in out of the wasteland. And where have we been, hmm? Crawling through bits of radioactive muck again? If you are playing a female character, the voice will remain the same. But our brain does have an explanation for this. Ah, well, as to that, You'd be surprised how hard a feminine-sounding voice modulator is to find in the Forbidden Zone. It's not as though brain-sustaining life support tanks grow on trees. I had to take what I could get. It also seems our brain has picked up some tunes on the various ventures around the wasteland, as we can hear it hum the Begin Again song from the Dead Money DLC, which regularly plays on the mysterious broadcast around Big MT. Begin again in the night. Thank you to Lee Relo from the Discord server for suggesting this one. In Fallout 3, we can hear the amazing adventures of Herbert Daring Dashwood and his manservant Argyle. The old school broadcast on GNR sets a great scene and is very interesting to listen to. You're listening to the adventures of me, Herbert Daring Dashwood, and my stalwart ghoul manservant, Argyle. On our hunt for bobbleheads, we will be led to an unmarked location known as Rockopolis. The flags that hang above the hidden entrance are the only hint that there is something here. Once inside, next to the unarmed bobblehead, we can find the body of Argyle. And while there is some more here that we can find around, like a holotape, the more interesting thing that many people miss is that we can also meet Dashwood himself and tell him the fate of his longtime friend. In Tinpenny Tower, we can meet Herbert and chat him up about various things. But if we have already found Argyle, he will have this to say. Argyle was my manservant. Ah, but that's really just a fancy word for the guy who saves my sorry skin on a regular occasion. He was a ghoul, you see. Been around since before the war. We met when I stole his girlfriend back in 41. We'd been best friends ever since. We got separated a long time ago and never reunited. 
If you find Argyle out there somewhere, you be sure and tell me, okay? Dead. Argyle. You, you're sure? My God. I always thought he'd outlive me by at least a hundred years. Poor bastard. But thank you. Thank you for telling me. At least now I know. At least now the poor guy can catch a breather. I'd like to return your kindness. Here, take this key. It unlocks my safe. Lots of stuff in there I'll never use again. My adventuring days are over. In Fallout 4, we can meet many wonderful characters and great companions. Boston is filled with exciting people post-war, but one of the most interesting is Deacon, a railroad member. He will even vouch for the sole survivor when they show up at the Old North Church. Who is this? Wow, newsflash boss. This guy is kind of a big deal out there. Do we know each other? I didn't need to meet you to hear about you. You have made waves. You've left a trail of destruction in your wake. Gone places no sane person would go alone. So you're vouching for him? Yes, trust me. He's someone we want on our side. Deacon seems to know a lot about us, and we can actually see him observing us throughout the game. Deacon will appear in some sort of disguise in various locations around the Commonwealth, and even have some bits to say to the sole survivor. After meeting McDonough, we can find him posing as a guard in Diamond City. Side. Hey. Hey there. What's up? What a day, huh? Welcome to the, uh, Great Green Jewel. You'll totally love it here. Don't you have, like, important things to do? Hi. Nothing more to say. We can spot Deacon acting as a drifter in Good Neighbor and even see him using one of the pods in the memory den. Hi. Some fine-looking hey. weapons. What's up? What a day, huh? Everyone's welcome in Good Neighbor. Even me. Don't you have, like, important things to do? Nothing more to say. And finally, we can see him pretending to run for the caravans at Bunker Hill. Hey there. What's up? What a day, huh? Sure love trading here. For trade stuff. Don't you have, like, important things to do? Nothing more to say. It certainly adds a lot of depth to the character of Deacon when we see him in different locations like this, and it makes meeting him later that much more rewarding once we do know about it. Just a small, nice little detail Bethesda added to Fallout 4. Thank you to Philip and Kitty from the Discord server for suggesting this one. In Fallout New Vegas, we can travel to Bitter Springs. This location saw quite the tragedy when the NCR flushed the cons out and executed the civilians that started to flee, including the sick, elderly, and children. The state of affairs when we arrive in Bitter Springs is terrible. As Gillies will explain, this is shown to us by the NCR flag flying upside down. It's a distress call. This camp is in bad shape, and if we don't get relief soon, I don't know what will happen. We can help turn the camp's fate quite a bit, and this becomes even easier with Arcade in the party, who can teach the doctor here at the base a thing or two. Hey, if you can help, I'll take whatever I can get. Doctor's bags would be a huge help, but what I really need are medical texts. I'm not trained to deal with major psychological trauma, and we've got a lot of kids in this camp. Yeah? Hey, sure, that would be fantastic. Thank you, that was very helpful. I don't think I'll need those books after all. After we have completed the quest, no not much, the flag will be fixed, flying right side up, showcasing that the hardship of the camp has been conquered. Small details like this really do it for me, and Obsidian didn't have to include this change. Still, it makes you feel like you really helped out the NCR and adds that much more immersion into Fallout New Vegas. In Fallout New Vegas, after being dug out of a shallow grave, we will meet Doc Mitchell, the Good Springs Town doctor. Mitchell will guide us through character creation while offering some delightful banter along the way. When it comes time for the Vidomatic Vigor Tester, Doc Mitchell has a ton of dialogue that can be triggered by going extremely high or terrifyingly low on each special stat. That's some serious atrophy, even for someone who's been in bed a while. It's a wonder you can move at all. Surprised anybody would want to tangle with you. 
Heck, you could go deathclaw hunting with a switch. Now, I ain't no optometrist, but maybe we should fit you for some glasses while you're here. <laughs> Nothing gets by you, huh? Could have used you when I lost my keys last month. I just don't get it. A stiff breeze would tear you in two with a couple of bullets and you're right as rain. I guess that explains how you're still alive. You're built solid as an oak. Huh. Must be some frontal lobe damage. Good to see them bullets didn't affect your charm none. Sorry, son. I fixed up your head as best I knew how. I guess I missed a spot. Look at that. Maybe them bullets done your brain some good. Don't have all your coordination back yet, looks like. You should think about doing some rehab. <laughs> Most patients don't get out of bed after being shot and then move like they was in perfect control. You're unusual, I'll say that. Now that don't make a lick of sense. Seems to me you're the luckiest son of a gun in New Vegas. With luck like yours, I'm surprised them bullets didn't just turn right around and climb back into the gun. Yeah, that's a pretty standard score there, but after what you've been through, I'd say that's great news. Doc Mitchell will also have different items to give out depending on your build, like the boxing gloves for unarmed characters. Fallout New Vegas never ceases to impress me with how much detail it has packed into such a great game. Big thanks to Ted from the Discord for suggesting this one. In Fallout 2, consider heading to Broken Hills when you are looking for something to do outside the main quest and want to earn some money. This is where we can meet Bill, a caravan master, and he has a couple of jobs for the chosen one. You can shovel Brahmin dung for $100 or bump up to the $200 mark for a caravan protection gig. We will be paying more attention to the former in this video. If the Chosen One has an intelligence of at least four, they will be able to repeat this job, and after five times, a new special perk will show up on the character sheet. The Expert Excrement Expediter perk will grant the Chosen One plus 5% to speech at the cost of some reputation loss in Broken Hills, and more than fair trade. Small details like this really tie the worlds of the classic Fallout games together. Taking small jobs and having them affect the character directly is a nice touch. This perk in particular is a fun and humorous one to add to the collection. Thank you to Daddy Harambe from the Discord server for suggesting this one. In Fallout New Vegas, we are all familiar with Helios 1. The power plant is one of the most sought after landmarks in the Mojave. When doing the Lucky Old Sun quest, we have a few options that will change the future of fan favorite, Fantastic. Suppose we follow the NCR's plan, sending the power to the Strip in McCarran. In that case, Fantastic will get a promotion to Hoover Dam, claiming to be in charge of the whole shebang. Well, look who it is! Fantastic's little helper, all grown up, following in his master's footsteps. What's it look like, man? I'm fucking king of the NCR. Caesar's Legion has Caesar, the NCR's got Fantastic. It's Fantastic's NCR now. This whole war's about power, man. Caesar wants it, NCR wants it, Fantastic's got it. After I fixed Helios 1 and basically saved the NCR from the dumb shits who run it, I got myself a little promotion. Now I run the whole shebang. Still, if we arm Archimedes 1 and wipe out the NCR, returning a few days later we will see the Legion has taken Helios. Due to this, Fantastic will be donned in Legion gear and spouting his pride for a job well done. Hey man, when in Rome. Man, I don't even know. It's crazy. Shh, you feel that? That's the winds of change, baby, and Fantastic's riding them with his magical angel wings. They saw the shit I did for the NCR, how I carried them on my back, brought the fire to the heathens. I wasn't gonna help them, but they begged. Well, somebody begged. Couldn't say who for sure. 
It's all a blur, you know? Cam's man. What a trip. I'm working on some top secret shit I can't even tell you about. It's so mind blowing. But here's a little taste. You know how you can only collect sunlight during the day? Well, what if you could make it daytime all the time? Crazy, right? Or is it? I'm gonna find somebody smart and ask him that question, see what he says. It'll be fucking intense. Adios, amigo. In Fallout New Vegas, back at Jack and Diane's drug lab in Red Rock Canyon, we can find a few trailers that the two use for their daily activities. One of these mobile homes has a table that has an interesting rare item on it that we can only find here at the cons camp. This flower is highly suspect. Our first, most significant, and only indicator is the quotations around the item name when we see it in game. There are only three bags of this stuff in Fallout New Vegas, and all of them are right here. These sacks of powder are likely being implied to be narcotics of some kind. Most people can probably make their best guess as to what they think it would be exactly. This white stuff is one of the rarest items in the game though, so making sure to steal all three off the table is a must for item hoarders. In Fallout New Vegas, we meet Boone, a grizzled NCR vet who has seen his fair share of action. This combined with the loss of his wife, Carla, has made him about as cold as you can be in the Mojave. The NCR has a policy that in the event their personnel die in action, they must have a letter to be passed on to their friends, family, or loved ones. Craig Boone is no different, and if he does die after being recruited as a companion, we can find the letter for Carla on his body. It reads, Carla, if you're reading this, then you know. Sorry, wanted to make it back home to you. The pension won't be much, but it should help you and the baby get by. Want you to remarry when you meet the right person. Don't want you to have to be on your own. Not sure the right way to say how I feel about you. Think you know already though. Always seemed like you knew what I meant. Maybe better than I did. Wish I was there with you now. There are things I couldn't tell you. Tried. Whatever you learn over time about my service in the NCR, hope you can forgive me. Lastly, know you were against it, but if it's a girl, want her to be named after her mother. Know it's playing dirty to win the argument this way, but too bad. It's worth it. Craig. Big thanks to Citizen from the Discord server for suggesting this one. In Fallout 3, we will be called back to Vault 101 in the quest Trouble on the Homefront. During this time, we'll be able to explore the vault a bit more than we could before and under less demanding circumstances. If we happen to go back to the clinic and former office of the Lone Wanderer's dad, James, we will be able to get what I consider to be his final parting gift. The framed quote that hangs in the office that James has told us since childhood holds a few items for those with a lockpick at 50 or higher. Inside we can find some caps, a copy of the rocket launcher schematics, and a holo tape that gives us a bit more insight to James's thoughts during the earlier points of the game. Well, here we are, nestled all safe and snug inside Vault 101. It's so cold down here, colder still with Catherine gone. Oh, Catherine, I so wish you were here with me. How the hell am I supposed to do this by myself? Live down in this hole. Take care of our child. But this is our life now. So I guess I'd better get used to it. The overseer who runs the place is an overbearing bully. But I've dealt with worse. In Fallout New Vegas, we can find many different nuclear-powered bugs and creatures. One of the best among them are the mantis that we can find in various spots around the Mojave. If you happen to find some mantis, make sure to look for their eggs. If we shoot them, it will break the clutch and release the baby mantids into the world. If you aren't doing this in every playthrough, you are doing mankind a great disservice. In Fallout New Vegas, we can find a ton of items that do not really serve much more of a purpose other than just being a good find, and the King's School of Impersonation hosts a good chunk of these. We can find a small putting setup on the second floor complete with a 9 iron and golf balls. Usually we wouldn't think too much about this, just a cute little environmental story being told, but these golf balls are actually quite rare, this being one of only two locations they can be found. The other spot we can find these is the X8 Research Center's Institutional Test Facility a school set built to host different tests we can find in the big mountain complex. The golf balls we find here seem to be a bit larger than they should be, which is quite interesting. Regardless, these are the only places we can find these balls, with a total of seven being present in the game. You never know when half a dozen golf balls will come in handy. 
and you will be prepared. In Fallout 4, one of the tallest buildings in downtown Boston is Mass Fusion, and if we find ourselves on the roof of this majestic skyscraper, there's quite a view to take in. Once you are done soaking in the whole of the Commonwealth from above, there is quite a fun way to get down that I use almost every time I find myself up there. If you have to go to Good Neighbor, it's my favorite way to get there. Simply jump from this corner and you will be hurtling towards the settlement. Before we hit the ground though, the loading screen will act as an amazing net catching us before we actually hit the ground and causing no damage. In my opinion, this is the absolute best way to enter Good Neighbor. Thank you to Wisefield from the Discord server for suggesting this one. In Fallout 4, you will inevitably come to Diamond City, the settlement built out of the remains of what once was Fenway Park. They don't call this place the Great Green Jewel of the Commonwealth for no reason, as this is one of the largest towns you can find in any of the Fallout games. It seems over 95% of players seem to miss one of the most straightforward achievements while here at Diamond City. Seriously, look at these numbers. Out of nearly half a million players, depending on the platform, as low as 4% have unlocked this incredibly easy achievement. It could be due to mods, not being interested in achievements, or just not knowing about the home run achievement that could lead to these low numbers. But to unlock it, all you have to do is run the bases in Diamond City. Start at the home plate and move counterclockwise until we're back at home. Then the achievement will unlock. So make sure to go out there and raise the numbers for this really easy achievement. Sometimes you gotta wonder, does anyone fight back? One of those things, it's that secretary of his Keep looking at me like that. and her I'm start thinking yours. hair. <laughs> Big thanks to Wishes Valentine from the Discord server for suggesting this one. In Fallout New Vegas, we will meet the Happy Trails Caravan when it's time to head to Zion. Based on how we interacted with Alice McLafferty from the Crimson Caravan, Happy Trails leader Jed Masterson will have different dialogue, thanking the courier for getting rid of his competition if you take her out, or being starstruck by seeing Alice's bread and butter walk through the door if you've helped the Crimson Caravan. Howdy, friend. Heard my little broadcast, did you? Yeah, you look the type. Hang on. Ain't you the one that wiped out the Crimson Caravan's Vegas branch not too long ago? Ought to thank you for that. Knocking McLafferty out of the running gives happy trails a market to expand into. Howdy, friend. Heard my little broadcast, did you? Yeah, you look the type. Wait a minute, I recognize you. Yeah, you're Alice McLafferty's rising star, ain't you? You sure you want to be here? McLafferty's non-competes are pretty rigid. In Fallout New Vegas, we can travel to Red Rock Canyon and meet the Great Cons. Two of these cons, Jack and Diane, will have a quest for the courier running various packages around the Mojave and allowing us to teach Jack some recipes if we pass the proper dialogue checks. The con's reward for doing this bit of work is quite a practical unarmed attack called the Con Trick. With all of the grace of a Sprydale Gribble, the courier will now be able to reach down and throw a handful of dirt at their enemies. This is supposed to only work when you are on dirt and sand, but when it does work, it can be one of the best attacks you can learn in New Vegas, as any of the unarmed weapon effects transfer to the dirt, so it can be pretty devastating. Not to mention the absurdity of groups of people falling to pocket sand. Thank you to Arizona Ranger from the Discord server for suggesting this one. In Fallout New Vegas, once you gain the favor of Caesar's Legion, you will be offered the key to a safe house for the faction. This humble abode has a nice Legion flag on the wall, an entertainment area, and a few beds to choose from, with various gear on each of them. One of these beds holds a unique item that any courier will want to grab for their journey, the Lucky Shades. These sunglasses will grant the player plus one luck and look pretty good while doing it. While these shades aren't in the best condition when we find them, they can be easily repaired with other glasses. So make sure this is one of your stops before you hit the casinos on the strip. Thank you Nurb from the Discord server for suggesting this one. In Fallout 3, just southwest of Tenpenny Tower, we can find Lucky's, an unmarked store in an unmarked location. This small shop has seen better days, but that hasn't stopped a scavenger from making it into a home. We are looking into this small store today because of a couple of unique items that we can find here. First, we can find a miniature damaged garden gnome. 
Fallout 3 has many hidden things that are smaller or larger than they should be, and it has been great seeing so many of them recently. The main event here are the sunglasses that we can find on the mannequin holding a hammer. These are the Lucky Shades, and we can only find them here at Lucky's. They look identical to regular sunglasses, but they grant a plus one luck and damage resistance, making them not only stylish, but completely worth stopping here on your next playthrough. Thank you to Ulysses from the Discord server for suggesting this one. In Fallout New Vegas, when you find yourself on the strip, it is easy to get distracted by the many neon-soaked temples of debauchery that can be found here. One thing a lot of people overlook, perhaps because of these temptations pulling them every which way, is the magazine vending machines that occupy the center block of the strip. Understandably, a courier walking through the hustle and bustle of New Vegas could be forgiven for thinking that these were merely static set pieces, but that isn't the case. Suppose we approach a set of vending machines. In that case, we can get a random skill magazine from each one by activating it, totaling nine in the entire game, all entirely located on the New Vegas Strip. These machines are a one-time use thing though, so we won't be spamming it to get a vast collection of skill magazines. Still, it is nice to get what you can in the Fallout series, and you can always find a use for these magazines even if it's just making a few caps off of them. In Fallout 2, one of the best side quests we can engage in is become a prize fighter. This involves boxing in the jungle gym and working our way up to the championship. Of course, this is Fallout 2 we're dealing with here, so there are pop culture references aplenty here. Two of the biggest being Evan Holyfield and The Masticator. Both represent real boxers, with Evan Holyfield being a play on the real deal Evander Holyfield, and the latter being a reference to none other than Mike Tyson, who had fought Holyfield in a real life bout that had some controversial moments to say the least. The fight would go down in infamy as the fight that Tyson bit a good chunk of Holyfield's ear off. Fallout 2 pays homage to this in a fun way as if you get KO'd by the Masticator, we can sometimes find the player's ear item in the inventory, and the description reads, This is your ear. The Masticator bit it off during the fight and spit it onto your unconscious body. If you're reading this, it probably means you will be reloading soon. Of course, it is possible this item has some special value. Despite the cheeky rundown of the item, it in fact does not have any special value. Still, there is a chance that we beat the Masticator, and if the Chosen One manages to knock him out, his ear can appear in the inventory with a description reading, This is the Masticator's ear. You bit it off after pummeling him senseless. Congratulations on beating him. He is one of the toughest NPCs in the game, especially when you don't have any weapons or armor. Unlike the Chosen One's ear, the Masticator's is actually worth something, as it can be sold at Renesco's or down at New Reno Arms for a cool $750. Fallout and Fallout 2 hold an incredible amount of small details for people willing to look for them, and new Reno hosts enough to keep you busy for hours. In Fallout 4, one of the landmark locations our adventures will take us is the Memory Den in Good Neighbor. This lounge hosts pods that allow customers to relive some of their favorite memories of the past. Typically, the sole survivor would head to the Memory Den at the request of Nick Valentine to further the main quest. Still, suppose we travel to the lounge before meeting the detective and pass a charisma check with Irma. In that case, we can jump into the pod and relive Sean's kidnapping from a unique perspective. I think you've stepped into the wrong place, sweetheart. You don't look like you need the memory den. Do you even know what we do here? Something about memories? Glad to meet someone who pays attention to the name. That's right. We let you relive the past. Now, I hate to turn such a clever boy away, but we aren't accepting new clients right now. You're cautious. I respect that. But I think I can handle it. If you'll just give me a chance. Well, I suppose there's no harm in giving you a trial run. Now, memories involving other people are easiest. Recent events involving loved ones, uh, does anything come to mind? My wife died recently. If I could see her just one last time. Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. It's never easy losing someone that close to you. But I think we can help. All right, sit down in the lounger. Let's see what memory we can find. Uh, that, that, that's the one. Lift the curtain, honey, it's showtime.
Manual override initiated. Cryogenic stasis suspended. Oh my god. The vault no. computers are still working. I can't watch this again. Checking through the logs. Hopefully it's all... Just... It should have been me. Pod C6. Why didn't they take me? Down the hall near the end. How could you be a part of this? Who are you? How could you be a part of this? This is the one. Here. Open it. Please, no. Everything's going to be fine. Come here. Come no, here, baby. No, no. I've got him. Let the boy go. I'm only going to tell you once. <laughs> Why are you doing this? I'm not giving you Sean! God damn it. God. Get the kid out of here. Let's go. At least we still have the backup. God damn it. Cryogenic sequence. I'm gonna kill you! We are reaching the end of the memory. Hold on. Try to calm down. Your blood pressure is spiking. I'll have you out of there in three, two, one. I'm so, so sorry. If I had any idea that we were going to put you through that again, I would have said no. <sighs> I will not be recommending this place to my friends. I'm sorry we couldn't help you, honey. But I know someone who might. His name's Nick Valentine. He's a detective. Works out of Diamond City these days. Oh, if anyone can help you find your missing child, it'll be him. Thank you to Soviet from the Discord server for suggesting this one. In Fallout New Vegas, one of the most popular drinks around the Mojave is Sunset Sarsaparilla. Of course, we can find the headquarters for this tasty creation just outside of Vegas, but many people may miss a small but rare object while we're here. We can find a very hard locked door on the first floor. This was the office of Sunset Sarsaparilla VP of Tech, Marcus Brody. And inside we can find what we are looking for, a miniature empty sunset bottle. This is just a nice little find that may be worth picking up to decorate your room later if you find yourself in the area. Thank you to Kevin the Dragon and W6B from the Discord server, both of which really wanted me to cover the Mojave Express drop boxes in a video. In Fallout New Vegas, there will be multiple times you can come across these Mojave Express containers and they can be used to ship different items to each location they appear at. In total, there are five throughout the Mojave, located outside the general store in Good Springs, inside the Nash residence in Prim, next to the door in the Dino Delight Motel in Novak, right outside the Old Mormon Fort in Freeside, and inside the LVB station on the New Vegas Strip. Most people I have talked to ignore these drop boxes entirely, but they can be of some use. If you're planning a route to sell some items or take them back to your player home, you could send thousands of pounds of gear to any of these boxes and pick it all up whenever you want. These mail drops don't mimic traditional containers though, so you won't be able to just store items in the one that you're currently interacting with. Still, you can send some items off to another drop spot and everything will remain there until it's picked up, so these are underrated as a stash for items. While often overlooked, this is an excellent feature in Fallout New Vegas that ties nicely into the story of the courier. Shout out to Kai Rojan Crane on the Discord server for suggesting this one. In Fallout 3, traveling through the Jury Street Metro, we can find the Jury Street Tunnels. This acts as the operating station for Ryan Brigg, a scientist acting as a raider who has been making jerky from mole rat meat and wonder glue. According to his terminal here, it makes the meat far more desirable. He has big plans to sell it around the Capital Wasteland too. Unfortunately, Ryan is hostile to the Lone Wanderer, and we don't get to see his mission realized. But 
we can still use his meat box to craft our own mole rat wonder meat if we have the ingredients needed. Strangely, we can find one singular piece of mole rat wonder meat in Fallout New Vegas. The journey will take us to Cannibal Johnson's cave. Inside, next to a knife by the fire, we can find the ultra rare slab of meat. Pun very much intended. Who knows how it found its way inside Johnson's Haven. Perhaps the old timer figured out the recipe for himself. Regardless of how it got here, rare item hunters should be making this a required stop in any of their playthroughs. Thank you to Ted from the Discord server for suggesting this one. In Fallout 2, you may notice some fashionable new Coca-Cola vending machines and pass by them thinking they were merely set pieces. Still, if you have some money in your inventory and can pass the luck or agility check, you can buy 10 to 20 bottles from each machine. These machines will restock every two to three weeks, so this gives you a steady source of the pre-war soft drink for things like super stim packs from Myron. Shout out to Janichi from the Discord for suggesting this one. In Fallout 3, we can find many small details and great examples of environmental storytelling. One such instance shows up between Vault 106 and the VAPL-58 power station. We can see a motorcycle leaning against a rocky cliffside. Before the drop-off, we can find a metal box containing Patrick's farewell a holotape left by a former U.S. Armed Forces member, and the letter reads, Hey there, Tabby Cat. I know this wasn't fair to you. I'm sorry. Everything you've done for me since Anchorage, you were the best chance I had at making a normal life again. But I just don't think it's possible for me. You deserve a life of your own. Tell Mikey the bike is his when he gets his license next summer. She'll need a new toroidal coil soon. I'm also leaving the commie pistol. Please take it to Dad. He'll want that. Everything else I leave to you. I know it isn't much. I love you, Cat. Please, forgive me one more time, Patrick. The note explains quite a bit of what we have already seen with the motorcycle and the pistol. Still, we can find Patrick's remains at the bottom of the cliff, with a noticeable dent in the ground where he likely landed. This is just a brutal small detail that makes the world of Fallout 3 that much more wonderful. Thank you to Soviet on the Discord for suggesting this one. In Fallout New Vegas, if we go to the King's School of Impersonation, we can find a few rare items we can't find anywhere else. Inside one of the rooms in the school, we can find a beer pong table. Seems some traditions never die. We can also see three ping pong balls, an item that is located entirely in this room. Not much about these balls is interesting, but much like Soviet said on the Discord, these are a must-have display item for any rare item collector. Thank you to Kairuji and Crane from the Discord server for suggesting this one. In Fallout New Vegas, one of the most devastated areas we can come across is Camp Searchlight. The site is ground zero from a nuclear attack perpetrated by the Legion to the NCR troops stationed here. One such trooper is Private Kyle Edwards, who has ghoulified and taken up hiding inside one of the open houses in Searchlight. Speaking with him, we can find out why he is scared to leave. Rad scorpions. Fuckers creep the hell out of me. I'm not going outside while they're still crawling around. This starts an unmarked quest called Arachnophobia. We need to take out the three giant rad scorpions that will spawn outside the door once we talk to Edwards. When the smoke has cleared from that nonsense, we have a few possibilities on where to send the ghoul soldier. Edwards could join Aster, explore the wasteland, or my personal favorite, take up shop at Ranger Station Echo. The NCR camp has plenty of other ghoul soldiers, and to me, it seems like the best place for Edwards to realize that he will be just fine in the NCR. Ranger Station Echo has some background radiation that makes it more accessible for ghouls. This could be due to the craters we see outside, which most people attribute to dropping atomic bombs, which makes sense due to the subject of the Fallout series. Still, I have always thought that they were meteorite craters, though they are a tad smaller than what you would expect for that. Craters left by meteorites often have the same pattern, with a large hole surrounded by a couple of smaller ones. Whatever the case may be, this, to me, seems like a perfect home for Private Edwards, and it sure beats the hell out of being stuck in Searchlight. A user in the Discord server posted a few pictures of the Ranger Station Charlie sign and was wondering about the meaning behind the back of this sign, which seems to have some unique textures. We can see the NCR salvaged some planks from this location and painted the blank backside to make the Ranger Station Charlie sign. This actually paints a detailed story that the devs certainly didn't have to put the work into, as many people will likely miss it. At the bottom of the mismatched planks, we can see it says Trailer Park Pines. This was the name of the location pre-war. As we can see, the NCR used these trailers to build a nice ranger fort outside of Novak. This is just the kind of little attention to detail that really staples the Fallout series. Something so hidden and obscure, easily missed, but it tells such a simple story, giving us that much more immersion into this great game world. Thank you to Sniper65615 from the Discord server for suggesting this one. 
In Fallout New Vegas, one of the first things you will deal with is the Good Springs tutorial which ends with a quest that sees you either protect the town from powder gangers or help the gang take the settlement. One thing many people don't do is take out Joe Cobb before anything is said and done. In fact, it's looked down upon by the townsfolk to do so. But if we do, we will get this unique nervous dialogue from Ringo. Uh, thanks, I guess. Cobb wasn't the problem, though. I could have handled him if he ever found me. Cobb's friends are the bigger problem. And when he doesn't get back, they'll be coming here for blood. There's no way I can fight them all. I'm gonna lay low for as long as I can, assuming the town doesn't throw me to the wolves. I've got no chance against the gang on my own. Big shout out to Zogun on the Discord server for suggesting this one. In Fallout 3, one unmarked location, Gold Ribbon Grocers, holds not only a classic easter egg, but some good loot as well. When entering the shop, we can find arrows leading us to a pressure plate, and once we activate it, we see that the store has been turned into a Rube Goldberg machine. These displays are chain reaction performances that were designed to complete a simple task most of the time. Named after American cartoonist Rube Goldberg. This site pays homage to its namesake well and even rewards us with a couple of missiles and a mini nuke. When Fallout 3 was released, this whole setup was considered pretty impressive, not to say it isn't now, but it was a great way to show off the game's physics. Thank you to CrimsonFox36 from the Discord server for suggesting this one. In Fallout 3, one of the most packed locations with neat finds and small easter eggs is Satcom Array NN-03D. The three satellite towers that have become overrun by raiders are a fantastic place to explore for those looking for some unique finds. One of the first things I want to talk about are the raiders that patrol around the outside upper levels of the towers. For some reason, they are much smaller than the NPCs you usually find, barely coming up to the shoulder of the Lone Wanderer. Nothing wrong with being short, it's just a curious find. Just to the northeast, we can find a door that looks like it may be an alternate entrance into the towers. Still, when we open it, we are greeted with one of the best Easter eggs in the Fallout series. It's also worth noting that on top of this entrance are three missiles, with two of them balancing on their tips for some reason. Upon entering the B Tower, we can find a chest set complete with miniature items as pieces, with gnomes acting as pawns, various bottles for other pieces, and even some electron charge packs. There is a row of sporks balancing on the handrail just past the chess game, and these are pretty delicate too. You don't want to get too close to them if you respect the scene's integrity. We can find a giant teddy bear behind the chemistry set here just past the boarded up entrance. This fell is pretty much the same size as the Lone Wanderer, and if you shoot it before taking it, it should hold its dimensions after being dropped from your inventory. We can find this domino beer set up on the staircase connecting towers C and B. The idea is that the toy car will knock down the first beer the rest should follow, but it's easier said than done. There are coffins, with skeletons inside of them, here as well, presumably from the grave sites outside. Next to this scene is a ton of empty whiskey bottles, so there's nothing too out of the ordinary for a raider hideout. Finally, if we go to the top of Tower C, on the edge of the dish, we can see a scarecrow dummy holding two mini nukes, and the view from here is a type of reward as well. Fallout 3 is filled with small details and exciting secrets, but this place takes the cake with how many appear in such a confined area. You don't want to skip this charming post-war playground on your next playthrough. In Fallout New Vegas, near the Nipton rest stop and past the plane crash, we can find a location many players miss during their playthroughs, the Scorpion Burrow. Up top, we can find a bunch of rad scorpions, and below it's not much different. Among those in the burrow itself, we can find a rad scorpion queen. This is one of two locations where we can find a queen, the other being the Searchlight Fire Station. After dealing with the queen, we can find a few poor souls that couldn't stand the scorpions down here. Some, like a prospector with good loot, and others with strange loot like a wastelander with some Sierra Madre chips. The Fallout series is filled with hidden locations that lie just off the beaten path. This easily missable nest of hell bugs is an excellent example of how some of them can be hiding in plain sight. Thank you to Jimmy261 from the Discord server for suggesting this one. In the Fallout New Vegas DLC, Lonesome Road, we find ourselves in the Ravages of the Divide. The adventure will take us through blown out buildings and forgotten caverns containing many small details and secrets. 
My all-time favorite example of this is the fossilized dog we can find in the cave of Abaddon. Marked with Ulysses' old world symbol, we can find a small opening in the cave wall. Seymour will be waiting for you on a file cabinet in the back if you happen to have the Wild Wasteland perk. The dog acts as a miscellaneous item and has no weight or value, unless you're a Futurama fan. Seymour is a direct reference to the saddest episode, at least in my opinion, of Futurama, the seventh episode of the fourth season, Jurassic Bark. In this episode, we meet Fry's long-lost dog, which Fry assumed had just died of old age after moving on when he had been frozen for 1,000 years. It turns out, Seymour never moved on and just waited for Fry until his eventual death. Seymour is a must-grab for me in all of my playthroughs, and I like to think about his various adventures before showing up in New New York by the year 3000. Clearly, this episode has touched a lot of people, and it's always great to see a Futurama reference. In Fallout 3, we can find a variety of weapons and armor to aid us in our capital journey. One of the more unique tools we can see is the Shish Kebab, a sword and flamethrower hybrid that can cause quite a wallop when used. Considering it's constantly on fire, such a weapon would likely be pretty hot to the touch. The developers thought of this when designing the Shish Kebab. As we can see, the Lone Wanderer throws on an oven mitt when wielding this flame stick. This carries over to New Vegas, of course, and we can see that when changing weapons, the oven mitt appears on the hand of the player character and others using the shish kebab. This, however, sadly does not carry over to Fallout 4, where the design of the weapon was changed just a bit as well. Still, you have to love the Fallout series' small attention to detail, and these oven mitts are a great touch at that. Thank you to Billy Wayne Sully from the YouTube comments for suggesting this one. In Fallout 3, Megaton will likely be one of the first locations you stumble across. Town Mayor Lucas Sims will be waiting there to greet you, but we will be focused more on his house in this video. We can find an easily missable hatch inside the mayoral home leading to the roof. If we enter this portal, we will see quite the scenic overlook, and a good vantage point for the no-nonsense lawman. While up here though, don't miss your chance to visit Stockholm. No matter how difficult it might be, we can get to him from here. It involves some fancy parkour, but we can take the roof to the town fence and then perform a balancing act on that until we can jump towards the sniper. The more time I spend talking to you, the less I'm spending watching for raiders. How the hell did you get up here anyway? In the classic Sims game, you can download various skins for your characters. One such pack was related to Command & Conquer, adding NOD soldier textures to the game. Though looking back on these textures once they're actually in-game, the helmet bears a striking resemblance to the veteran ranger armor from Fallout New Vegas. Of course, this is designed to give off the look of an NOD trooper. It was still fun to see these days as it looks so much like my favorite helmet from New Vegas. This is just something I thought was neat and I wanted to share with everybody. Thank you to Arctic Penguin from the Discord server for suggesting this one. In Fallout 3's Point Lookout, we find many dark secrets and shady characters. Shacks among the swamps and the hill folk in the area can keep an explorer busy for hours, but the Trapper Shack holds quite a pleasant surprise for those looking. Inside the basement hatch, we can find a few cells holding ghouls and one holding a swampler. We need to get into that area, so dealing with the creatures is a must. Once inside, on top of a couple of safes, we can find the smallest Nuka-Cola Quantum in Fallout 3 as if we compare it to the standard variant, it is dwarfed immensely. This is a great item to decorate your player home with, and is also a nice find for a bit of a pick-me-up when stomping through the swamps. In Fallout New Vegas, deep in the belly of Hoover Dam, we can find the offices. Various staff mill about the area, looking for something to do. But behind the door marked with a radiation warning, we can find a nice treat in this otherwise dull workplace. Upon first inspection, nothing seems special about this room just some toxic waste barrels and large storage crates. Still, to the left of the entrance, if we search the wooden boxes, we can find the only two sets of Chinese stealth armor that exists in the game, besides the decommissioned one in Old World Blues, likely used to create the American Stealth Suit Mark II. These suits are an older model than the ones found in Fallout 3 and around the Anchorage simulation, and they do not produce an invisibility cloak, which could hint that they are tied to the canceled Fallout 3 project known as Van Buren, which would have seen Chinese infiltrators sealed inside a sublevel of the dam. These suits could have belonged to them, but Van Buren is non-canon, so we can only assume. Still, these suits are a perfect find for rare item collectors, and they will likely be missed entirely by most people due to how tucked away they are. Thank you to Detective Comison from the YouTube comments for suggesting this one. In Fallout 76, we can find the Torrance House, a rather large but passingly uninteresting mansion that's close to White Springs. Horror movie fans may recognize the name of this house as the surname of Jack from The Shining. 
the 1980 Stanley Kubrick film that was adapted from Stephen King's best-selling novel. And it's no coincidence either, as we can find several more references to the movie here at the Torrance House. Before we jump into the significant shining easter eggs here, I want to bring up the skeletons on the roof that are joined with a lovely teddy bear and some blocks that spell out hubba hubba. While we are up here, we can spot a tricycle that one could miss if they weren't looking for callbacks to the movie. The blocks that spell out red rum make this an excellent reference, which is a phrase made famous by the film. Of course, we can find a hedge maze here as well. Inside, many Patektrons patrol the area. Still, we can discover presumably a woman's skeleton next to some mannequins. And, for the main event, a skeleton representing old Jack Torrance himself, complete with fire axe. The Shining is an all-time classic, and I highly recommend anyone who hasn't seen it to go find a way and watch it when you have some free time. Seeing such a big homage being paid to it in Fallout 76 is a treat, and I look forward to checking out what more Appalachia has in store. In Fallout New Vegas, one of the more striking locations that we can find is the Searchlight area. Searchlight proper was victim to a chemical attack from the Legion, which has decimated the NCR in the small city. One of the more exciting things we can find is at the fire station, lying between the two parked fire trucks. The training dummy looks like a dead NPC. In fact, I'm not entirely sure it's not since we can use the cannibal perk on it and even resurrect him. Most people believe this to be a pre-war model used to train the firefighters in the area. But who's to say it's not just a dead NPC named Training Dummy that managed to get caught up in the attack at Searchlight. Either way, the damn thing has always creeped me out, but make sure to pay our boy a visit during your next playthrough. Shout out to Arctic Penguin from the Discord server for suggesting this one. In Fallout 3, when we get to Canterbury Commons, we will see the Antagonist and the Mechanist gearing up for a battle. If we take them both out right here and now, Uncle Roe will bless us with some unique dialogue. Whew. You wouldn't believe how much trouble those two have caused in this town. We've been looking for someone to get rid of them for a long time. But you just walked in and cleaned up the town. Easy as you please. We're in your debt, that's for sure. I'm Mayor of Canterbury Commons. Think of me as your own Uncle Roe. And take this as our thanks for cleaning up the town. Thank you to House from the Discord server for suggesting this one. Fallout New Vegas held the record for most dialogue recorded in a video game at the time of release. That's quite the feat. Judging how much unique dialogue we find in the game, it's not hard to believe. Some of these interactions can be found by pointing your gun at various companions that you can recruit in your adventures around the Mojave. How about I aim my gun at you for a while, see how you like it? Why do we always hurt the ones we care about the most? I assure you, you look extremely virile. Now, would you mind pointing that somewhere else? Thanks. Don't like no one drawing a bead on me. Leo doesn't like that, dearie. You should stop. You, uh... You wanna point that someplace else, boss? I got enough holes in me. Thank you to Volga from the Discord server for suggesting this first location that spawned this video. In Fallout 4, we can find many small details and exciting locations tucked away in the Commonwealth, and these are a few unmarked locations that I've always been really fond of. First, from Volga, we have the Rocket Shed or the Gas Canister Launcher, just to the northeast of Relay Tower 0BB-915. This shack has a stockpile of canisters and some slots angled to fire into the air. It's a nice little minigame to find in Fallout 4, and it's a fun secret to discover. Next, we look at the Car Tree Camp, just southeast of Recon Bunker Theta. The only thing to really find here are a few dead settlers, some with their legs sticking out of the ground, but I've always found it fascinating. How did these cars get up there? Were they blown up there by the bombs into the trees? Who knows? Either way, it's a fun thing to stumble across while exploring. And last, we find ourselves at Madden's Boxing Gym, just around the block from the Old North Church. This easily missable location in Boston's North End holds a lot of interesting and unique things. Seeing a rundown boxing gym in the post-war city, it just speaks to me. Something about it really drives a larger story home. We can find a boxing glove here as well, but I never like to pick it up as it feels just right at place, just right here. 
These are just a few locations that I think really stand out in Fallout 4. If you have any favorites that you want to share, make sure to hit the comments and let me know. This has been suggested by a few people, but most recently by Doom from Shroom on the Discord server. In Fallout New Vegas, if you decide to go with the Legion, after a few quests, Caesar will need to lie down after his head starts to hurt. This will prompt him to retire to his bed, but you can still talk to him during this state. God damn it, go away! Come back when I've had some sleep. Disturb me again and I'll have you killed. This threat is not an empty one, as if we wake Caesar up one more time, he will turn the entire Legion army against us, no matter how good of a reputation we've built up. I'm sure we have all felt like doing something like this once in our life after being woken up, but Caesar just has the resources to make it happen. Uh, I warned you not to bother me! Praetorians, kill this asshole! Another kill to my name! While filming for some videos this morning in Fallout 3, a bizarre thing happened to me that I had never seen before. I loaded a save right before leaving Vault 101, and as I waited for the DLCs to load in, what looked like a raider ran by at an incredible speed. I quickly hit the record button and attempted to follow him to see if he was going somewhere interesting. Still, due to his speed, I couldn't keep up. This isn't the weirdest part, as when I turned the corner, the game crashed, which is pretty standard for Fallout 3. But this crash was different. The task manager would not close the game. Even shutting down the computer wasn't closing the game. So I did a hard shutdown, and when I rebooted, Fallout 3, New Vegas, Fallout 4, and Fallout 76 were all uninstalled from my Steam. Fallout 1, 2, and Tactics remained. Keep in mind, these are all on different drives, some being on my main C drive. After this, I did a standard reboot on my PC, and everything was back. And the man didn't show back up in front of Vault 101. I suppose if you see this guy run by in your game, watch out. Thank you to Lettuce Man from the Discord server for suggesting this one. In Fallout 3, if you find yourself around the Museum of Technology, you can start an unmarked quest that leads to one of the best guns in the game, and it all begins with carefully checking the terminals that we find around the inside of the building. Selecting the string of zeros, we can start the minigame that Fallout 3 hints to the solution of with the name of the guy we are seeing the message from. Prime. Selecting the prime numbers on the terminals with this option will unlock what we need to continue. The numbers we are looking to plug into the terminals are 19, 53, and 113. Once the third and final number is selected, we will get a password that unlocks the terminal to the security office that will grant access to the safe, filled with great loot. The main event comes from the message we get from Prime here, leading us to Jury Street Metro Station. Inside the diner, we can find Prime's body and in his inventory, the Shuanglong Assault Rifle. This is a unique Chinese assault rifle that is the most powerful of its kind. However, it is pretty fragile, requiring repair often. Much like every special weapon in Fallout 3, there are no appearance differences with the Shuanglong Assault Rifle. Many people miss this fantastic unmarked quest if they aren't looking for it, as if you fail the number sequence, you get locked out of the quest and Prime's body will not spawn. The hunt is a small price to pay to add this gun to your collection, and it's worth it to do every playthrough. Thank you to Bubble, a supporter from the Discord server, for suggesting this one. There are loads of things to find in Fallout 3's Mothership Zeta DLC. Scouring the alien spaceship can be pretty rewarding, but it can lead to some somewhat perplexing finds as well. Deep in the waste disposal area of the ship, we can find a military locker that is hidden pretty well within the rubble. When searching this, we can discover probably one of the most important discoveries relating to the resource wars, General Chase's overcoat. The footlocker also contains a shipping holotape from Anchorage. This is an excellent tie-in to the Operation Anchorage DLC and adds some fun lore to the conflict. The only problem is, is that both of these items are bugged. When dropped, the overcoat will resemble similar combat armor from that setting. It also shows that way when worn. Equipping the armor also gave me the long finger glitch with no mods installed. When it comes to the holotape, the damn thing won't even play, instead showing a blink time on the player. This is somewhat disappointing as it would be great to collect these items for players who like to have unique things from around the wasteland. We can also find one of the best melee weapons in Fallout 3 here, the Samurai's Sword. This also has its own host of bugs, where it might not even appear at all, 
and if the Lone Wanderer brings it home, it could not show up when dropped to decorate your house. It's hard to say why so many of these particular items have such confusing bugs around them. However, it's still good to see so much detail put into this already expansive game world. Get fucked. Touche, Lupe, cool as the unthaw, but I still feel possessed as a gun charge to come as correct as a pawn star. And the fresh pair of steps and my best form car. So, I represent the first. Now let me in my verse right where the horns are like, uh. I gotta testify. Come up in the spot looking extra fly. For the day you die. You gon' trust the sky, you gon' trust the sky, baby girl, testify. Come up in the spot looking extra fly. For the day you die, yeah. 